Today on The Flush, we're headed to, well, a bonanza, complete with birdie fields. Rooster! A dead-eye shotgunner. And, as always, great canine partners. Oh, there it is. Can any bird hunter ask for more? Come on along, you're watching The Flush. Rooster! The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. Rooster! If you're looking for a pheasant bonanza, you know, birds flying high. Rooster! Rooster! Or coming down. Nice shot. Well, I found such a place. Follow me across the mighty Missouri River from Iowa into the eastern edge of Nebraska and, well, you're almost there. Now get ready for a bonanza of bird hunting. Well, your way, Ron. Ten. Rooster. We have just under 5,000 acres, or about 4,900 acres. And we have rolling hills, we have bottom ground, we have creek bottoms, a little bit of diverse cover. Headquarters consist of a clubhouse, gift shop, lots of kennels, and a beautiful lodge with 15 rooms and corporate meeting and dining facilities. Pheasant Bonanza offers memberships and it's open to the public, featuring both wild and released birds. It was uh, started back in 2005. I was not here, I came in 2007. I guess there was a lot of pheasants back, you know, back in the early uh, 90s and late late 90s even, and they just, uh, they kind of picked this place and called it Pheasant Bonanza. With a name like that, it was time to meet head guide and dog trainer, Jace Sorensen. And before the hunt begins, time for a gun safety chat. Handle all guns like they're armed, at all times loaded, um, in the air. But if you trip and fall, it's gonna go forward, not into the ground. Uh, you can't take back a shot once it's fired. So be mindful where you're shooting. So there's plenty of birds out here, we'll find them. Sounds like a plan, huh? Sounds like a good time. All right, Trent. Let's do it. Oh, who do we have here? Willow, she's two-year-old German short hair. Solid, solid German color, huh? Yeah. We're ready. Take this all the way down and then we'll bring one of these strips back. With me was Ryder, a 10 year old yellow lab who belongs to my daughter, Simone. Ryder, here, 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 here. Oh, hen? Hen. hen. No bird, no bird, good job. Another point. Oh, he's birdie. Hen. Oh, Lord. That's pretty locked. Maybe it's a hen, huh? Nope. Rooster! Rooster! Hey, two for two, boys. All right, that a boy, Ryder. Come on, bud. Come on, deal. Give. Nice. And we got another dog on point. Rooster! Good girl. Good girl. Dead. Good girl. Come on, boy. Fetch him up, dead bird. Come on. That a guy, that a boy here. He was running here, heel, heel here. Yeah, that was him. Yeah, I thought for sure he went down like a rock. Must have been off about an eighth of an inch. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take long before Bonanza evidence was in the air. Rooster! Holy cow! That was a great one. <laughs> Rooster! Oh, ho, 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 ho. 
hens flying. Rooster! Ring next two. And a surprise. Ah, quail. Oh, quail. <laughs> One single. That's cool. Shortly, another surprise. Chucker, where we got some huns out here. Atta boy. Give. Chucker partridge. This one probably was released here at some point. Good eating. Beautiful bird. Chuckers also are seldom alone. Ah. Yeah. No bird. Oh, there it is! <laughs> what happened? We had a chucker fly towards me, snatched it out of the air. Grab and release. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. That was pretty good, though. Wow, wow, wow. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Catching birds one-handed. I could only imagine what the next day might bring at Pheasant Bonanza. Coming up, we'll explore more of Pheasant Bonanza and its variety of birdie haunts oh, to that. hunt. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli, Ruffland Performance Kennels, and by Nutrisource. Okay, buddy. Oh my, you ready to go? Come on, here we go. There. Hey, boy. Come here. We gotta put this on, even though you ignore it. Yes, you know what this is all about, don't you? I get so happy. I'm so happy to go hunting. Me too. <laughs> These dogs get older. They hate to see it. But then, I'm no spring chicken either, so I think we're kind of made for each other this the fall. This fall. Um, He's still, he still got a little bit going now. I think you're getting all yourself all dirty. That's good. And I'm gonna throw Duke out here and he's gonna hop with us too. Ryder is with some pretty good company. Troy Wakefield, our guide today, hunts with some canine machines. I have three German short hairs. Troy has been guiding at Pheasant Bonanza for 14 years. This is my stress relief. This is when I get to watch my dogs work and the day just kind of gets better when you're out. You know, it's, it's hard to go out hunting like this and not enjoy seeing the dogs do what they want to do. Well, the dogs want to hunt, and so do we. Whatever side you go on, that's where the birds are all at anyway. No, 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 you, yeah, you yeah. take where the birds <laughs> Not only does he not give me a chance, all the birds are on his side. Yeah. How does that happen? <laughs> magnet. Trent the bird magnet was hot again. I think he got it. With Trent, you say that a lot. He got it. You ready? Come on. Yeah, right there. Behind us. Here, test. Fight through, fight through. Ron, I don't know. They're just trained to come to me. Well, no, they're afraid to get up by me. <laughs> I like it. Oh, my God. We got a quail up there. See that dog on point? There's a quail up here. I got a point over here. I got two points here. Three, no. Ah, shoot. Whoops, too low for the dog's sake. Lucky quail. Meanwhile, my shoot and I kept disappearing. 
Look at this. Oh. Right there. All right. Damn it. I lost my balance. Ah oh, man. I got two back here. Man. I missed everyone. That was fun. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> wow. They're going all in different directions. That was so cool. It's a quail burst. You're ready for a, you're thinking it's a rooster or a hen, and they come up by 15 different directions and your head goes spinning like this, you. Anyway, make a, that's a great excuse because I missed twice, okay? Here. Nice shot. Okay, I'm back. Missing once in a while uh, keeps you humble. Sometimes your blind hog even finds an acorn. After a short walk, three upland bird species were in the bag. A bobwhite quail, another native here in Nebraska, and then you have Hungarian partridge here. They, they can be native, and this is a checker partridge, which isn't native, this is a release bird. And then you got the old ringneck. What I couldn't explain was my partner's shooting luck. In the meantime, I couldn't hit my ass with both hands. Nothing. Right there, right there. Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. It's time to meet Tess, a female German shorthair pointer. So Tess is about three and a half years old. She, I think, will be the next hammer. She's what I consider a long retriever. So if she goes on and sees a down bird, you just let her go. And eventually she'll come back with it. Up next, we'll join Chef Joe in the Pheasant Bonanza Lodge as he prepares a tasty pheasant dish. And later, We'll reveal while Trent, the dead-eye shotgunner, never or hardly never misses a wing shot. The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism, Big Timber Fasteners, Thoroughgood Boots, Sage and Breaker, Truxedo, and by Aluma Trailers. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Plan your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Hunting pheasants is only part of the enjoyment. Time now, let's go to the kitchen. I'm here with Chef Joe, the head chef at Pheasant Bonanza. Now, Chef, you, you cook a lot of pheasant, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. So what are some of the things that people do wrong or right when they're cooking pheasants? Well, usually it'll be an overcooking issue. You'll uh, leave it on too long or try to get it tender or pull apart by cooking it longer. But if you don't do hours at a time, you'll end up having it dry out and then you just end up with the shoe leather, you know? What are we cooking today? Well, today we're gonna do a creme de la pheasant with sauteed garlic and bacon. And we're gonna par grill the breasts over here. All right. And we're just gonna cut them in half and throw them in our cream sauce to let it finish. And we'll toss that around a bit to add the flavor, the smoked gouda and the bacon and the garlic and get everything happy. I'm glad you're doing it. Let's get started. How long do you do those, Joe? just like 30 seconds on each side. I'm just putting a light coating of Montreal steak on top of the pheasant breast. You don't need to do both sides, just one side to get a little flavor on there. We just wanna turn these bad boys over because they're already done on one side. 
Wow, that doesn't take long. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get our flame on our pan here. I got a little bit of rendered pork fat in there. A little bit of olive oil gonna get that hot. We're gonna add some minced garlic. Just let that get sizzling, get happy. We're gonna cut these in half just so we have little morsels. My garlic's starting to smell nice over there. <laughs> you see how they're still a little, a little tender in there. A little rare. And that's okay, because you're gonna finish in your sauce. The garlic's nice and happy in there. If I did that first it would all end up on the floor. <laughs> To get all that garlic and grease on it. And now I want to add our cream. That should be about right there. You can always add some more. We have our smoked gouda and bacon here. We're getting there? Yeah, we're close. You got it cooked? Once that cheese finishes melting, your pheasant's going to be completely cooked and it's going to absorb all the flavor of the smoked gouda, your bacon, your garlic the creaminess and just gonna tenderize it a little bit better and tricks of the trade, you know? There you go, bud. Woo. And there's your creme de la pheasant with sauteed garlic and bacon. That's awesome. Good eating, as they say. Mm -hmm. Good job, bud. I'm glad oh. you like it. <laughs> That's awesome. Time to meet Gunner, a three-year-old rescue dog. I started looking around and uh, saw they had the uh, camo program for our rescue hunting dogs. Camo stands for Canine Adoption and Mentoring Outdoors. In essence, it's an adoption program for aging hunting dogs or dogs not up to hunting guide standards. So I guess they weren't, he wasn't quite the uh, guide quality that, 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 that they were looking for, but for a, uh, a weekend hunter like me, he's been perfect. For more information, go to kamoinc.org. Coming up, is Trent the best wing shot I've ever watched in a pheasant field? We'll answer that question and discover why. That's next. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring America's wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and your $35 membership will help us to create healthy habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your investment will make a difference today that will last forever. Machine. Huh? Jesus. Right there. Right there. I didn't think you could even hit it. I thought you had the trees in your way. Hen. That was cool. The hens go up by me, the roosters go up by Trent. That's the way it ought to be, sort of. Okay, Trent. I'm a believer, and your secret is? Taught me to put a mini mag light in the barrel of my shotgun. Yeah. And when I'm getting ready in the ready position, put this on your target, which would be like the corner of a bedroom. Yeah. And imagine that bird going left to right or right to left. And as you're mounting, keep it on track the whole time. Oh. And as you do that, you match this with your eyes it just becomes so natural. You know, for me, it goes back, I shot my first uh, pheasant eight years old back in south central Nebraska, kind of in the middle of Nebraska. And uh, I used to be able to take off after school and go shoot a three bird limit. So for me, it goes all the way back to uh, my childhood. And it's one of the most beautiful birds, I think, in, in North America. I mean, just a spectacular bird. 
not stupid either. They're not stupid. They can run, they can fly, they hide. I mean, they're, it's incredible what they can do. Trent's wing shooting skills started on a high school trap team. And that's where I kind of realized that, hey, I do have a gift here. And then from there, about 2013, 2012, 2013 is when I started doing a little bit of trick shooting. Uh, did he say trick shooting? All right, we're going to take a regular clay, shoot it from the hip. And do three from the hip. One over the head. We'll put that together, shoot one from the hip and one over the head. I have been doing this for about seven years now. Seven, eight years, yep. All right, we'll shoot one from the hip. Now, I didn't say how many shells I would get used, and I'm sure with untrained eyes that looked like a miss. Yes. No? It wasn't. Showing you how close I could get to it. Oh! Without actually hitting. You make it look so simple. Okay. I'm guessing it probably is. It's very simple. So I should be able to do it. Okay, here we go. Hey, look at that. You ready? Do it again. Oh no, that's the end <laughs> of my- Come on now, come on now. Let's no, go. I told you there's nothing to this. Are <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's not his first time. <laughs> so now we know Trent rarely misses birds made of clay or birds made of feathers. <laughs> nice shooting, Trent. You could call it a pheasant bonanza.